So, okay, welcome to this uh, course that fundamentals of electrical engineering. So, before giving you introduction, just I like I would like to tell one or uh, two words that is uh, this course is mainly for the first year engineering student or in fact all the uh, first year engineering student can uh, take this course and this is a very basic course. Only at the beginning I am telling that in the introduction you know uh, that a video that 5 minutes video there one thing I said only independent sources, but uh, I found that dependent sources also it is very simple thing. So, dependent sources also will be covered. So, these are the things and we will start from the basic concepts right basic concepts and from there we will uh, your what you call slowly and slowly we will move into you know much deeper understanding and uh, your first the DC, DC part will be covered and then with single phase three phase AC circuit everything will be covered by your including resonance and maximum power transfer theorem and your what you call that magnetic coupled circuits and then whatever first year course is there for your transformer single phase transformer uh, equivalent circuit and up to voltage regulation then little bit of three phase induction machine up to your equivalent circuit as well as first year course is concerned and then the DC machine right. So, this way let us start first thing is that your basic concept right. So, generally all branches of electrical engineering actually are based on two things that is your electric circuit theory and electric magne electromagnetic theory. I mean this is the your what you call uh, that uh, main two things. So, several branches in electrical engineering like your power system, control system, uh, electric machines, instrumentation, then electronics, then communication all are based on your electric circuit theory right. So, this course is mainly your what you call that your uh, suitable for your what you call the first semester or your first year rather electrical engineering student. And uh, so, we will start uh, from uh, your very basic thing. So, therefore, the basic electric circuit theory course is impo your, your important course for an electrical engineering student and of course, an excellent starting point for a first semester student or first year student in electrical engineering education. Electrical engineering means it covers all the things like electric, electrical, then your electronics, EC you call, then your in, 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 instrument, instrumentation. So, everybody I mean all the specialization in first year they can uh, they can take this course right and so and basically uh, if you if you think about electrical engineering we are often interested actually in electrical transferring energy from one point to another. This is uh, this is common idea you have when you look at the circuit at household and you might have seen somewhere that power generating station right, but ultimate thing is that we often interested in transferring energy from one point to another that is also you are transferring energy. So, to do this we require an interconnection of electrical devices right. So, and such interconnection is known as an as your as an electric electric circuit like if I if I mark it by this uh, this thing this plane we require an interconnection of electrical devices and such interconnection is known as an electric circuit right and each component of the electric circuit is known as element. So, what we need actually we require an interconnection of electrical devices and interconnection it will be through wires only conducting wires only and such interconnection is known as the electric circuit and each element of the electric circuit is known as your element that means, each component of the electric circuit is known as an element right. Therefore, therefore, an electric circuit is an interconnection of electrical elements. So, this is the your what you call this is your uh, the I mean requirement your electrical elements and electric circuit is an inter your what you call therefore, electric is an interconnection of electrical elements. So, uh, so just we will come to the figure 1 it shows a uh, simple electric circuit right. So, it consists of 4 basic elements look uh, just look at this circuit it consists of 4 basic elements one is voltage source this is very you know very basic things we have started. So, this is a voltage source representing say is battery this symbol will come later battery symbol will come later uh, this is a switch and this is a conducting material if you close this which will be closed if it is open it is open and this is this is actually conducting wire that is the conductors representing to air and this is the lamp and this is the filament say it is a made of tungsten right. So, this is a simple circuit 
So, a lamp connecting a such a simple circuit has several applications such as your torch light or a search light etc. So, this is a simple electric circuit. Now, let, let us come to the voltage source representing a battery. So, basically what happened electrical electrical charge that is electrons say in bracket we are writing electrons so will flow through the circuit due to chemical forces in the battery right due to the chemical forces in the battery of course, uh, little bit of uh, your battery cutting little bit of uh, physics here in physics uh, you have studied the batteries right. So, here we will not uh, your what you call here we will not cover to the chemical reaction and other thing, but some whatever we have learned from there only we will we'll talk talk about that. So, we will flow through the circuit due to the chemical forces in the battery. The charge gains energy from chemicals in the battery uh, and delivers energy to the lamp right. So, this regarding charge I will come little bit later. So, the charge actually gains energy from the chemicals and your and in the battery and delivers energy to the lamp that actually the from here actually energy is coming to the lamp right and the battery voltage is a measure of the energy gained by a unit of charge as it moves through the battery. Later we will see the your voltage and other things, but the battery voltage is a measure of the energy gained by a unit of charge as it moves through the battery, but of course, if the switch is switch switch is closed right. But one thing is that that suppose this conductor wire suppose it is a um, your it is a your uh, what you call the copper wires and that plastic insulation will be there right and this is the tungsten tungsten wire actually is not a, a good uh, is not a good uh, your what you call a conductor as compared to the copper we will come to that right. Uh, but question is the wires are of made of copper conductor I just told you and are insulated from one another by electrical insulation coating the your, your coating the wire that you have seen that you have seen. So, so electrons actually readily move through the copper conductor, but not through the plastic insulation. So, this wire is there, but it is your pill plastic insulation right and a switch I told you switch I told you it will allow or disallow the current. If you close the switch current will flow, if you just open it then current will not flow. So, and the lamp, lamp actually I told you it contains the tungsten wire it can withstand high temperature. So, so, tungsten is not as good as an a your electrical conductor or as copper and the electrons actually experience collisions with the atoms of the tungsten right and uh, that is the tungsten wires because that is that is through the copper conductor that your what you call charge or electron is flowing and it will make a your what you call collision with the atoms of the tungsten wire. So, therefore, resulting in heating of the tungsten and we can say that tungsten wire has electrical resistance. So, thus energy is transferred by the chemical action in the battery to the electrons right and then to the tungsten where it appears as heat. So, the tungsten become hot enough so that light is emitted. So, I will I will put a question to you that you are uh, that is that is your uh, many questions on, on this thing when I will move uh, that. Uh, so, whatever that electrons flow just let me uh, let me go to this circuit uh, just hold on hmm. uh, that actually electrons is flowing through this copper and when it comes to that it is called collision actually with the atoms of the tungsten and therefore, it is causing uh, you know heat. So, that means we can say that tungsten has an electrical resistance. Right, and I will put a question here that you have seen that your uh, that bulb 40 watt, 60 watt, and 100 watts, and so on. So they have all the filament, tungsten filament. Say, so a question to you: What is the what is the diameter of this your this tungsten filament? Because you, you if you if you see it, then you will find it looks like a coil, right? And what is that your diameter of this tungsten filament? Uh, this is a question to you. So, this is actually your what you call the, that how that uh, we get that we get that your bulb uh, this thing right. Uh, so, 40 watt uh, that later we will see 40 watt, 60 watt or 100 watt right. Therefore, the energy is transferred by the chemical action in the battery because the battery has a chemical action. So, that energy is transferred in the electrons and then to the tungsten where it appears as a heat. So, tungsten become hot enough so that light is emitted. So, this is a basic philosophy of your what you call that a simple circuit a simple DC volt a simple switch wires 
and your tungsten lamp, whatever you see in uh, that your what you call 40, 60 or your 80 uh, sorry 100 watt bulbs. So, now system of units actually in all electrical engineer uh, this thing we deal with several measurable quantities like quantities like voltage your then uh, current ampere right power watt and so on. So, however, our measurement must be communicated in a standard language such that all engineering professionals can understand irrespective of the country where the measurement is conducted. Such an international measurement language is the international system unit that is we call in short SI units right. It is international system units we call SI units right. So, adopted by the general conference on weights and measure that was in 1960. So, we follow that your what you call that SI is SI unit we call international system of units in short we call other way we call is SI. Right. So, basically in this international system there are 6 principal units uh, basically 6 only 6 principal units from which the units of all other physical quantities can be obtained. Right. So, just I am giving you the 6 units. So, table 1.1 it shows the 6 principal units and their symbols. The SI units are used through the, throughout the world. Right. So, one major advantage of the SI unit is that it uses prefixes based on the power of 10 and to relate smaller and larger units to the basic unit. So, table 1.2 shows SI prefixes and their symbols we will come to that first the 6 basic SI units right. So, this is the your 6 basic one is luminous intensity candela that is we will call CD right. Another is the thermodynamic temperature Kelvin in short in your symbol is K and the length meter symbol is m, and this mass kilogram it is kg, and this time it is second and electric current in ampere A. This is the six standard international or what you call SI unit from which other can be other can be obtained. So, this is the six say your basic SI units. So, you should you, it should be in your mind and then your table 1.2 it is actually you will see that the SI prefixes. So, there are many one or two I am making that like if it is 10 to the power 18 it call exa its symbol is capital E you know this is 10 to the power 15 we call peta its capital is uh, your hot capital P we call 10 to the power 12 we call tera it is T then 10 to the power 9 right. So, it is giga it is G then when come 10 to the power 6 uh, it is mega right it is M and so on. 10 to the power 3 is actually it is not coming to uh, align to this, but 10 to the power 3 means kilo. So, accordingly number accordingly numbering you can make it right it is it is uh, it is k. So, this way your deca, deci, centi, milli, micro all, but last one is 10 to the power minus 18 it is called ato in small a we call a 10 to the power minus 15 it is called femto f and 10 to the power minus 12 it is pico p and so on. So, from 10 to the power 18 the 10 to the power plus 18 to 10 to the power minus 18 these are actually your what you call the SI prefixes this is multiplier this is prefix and these are the symbols. So, first basic 6 SI units and these are your what you call the SI prefixes. So, this should this we should know right. Next is the charge and current. Now, the concept of electric charge is the underlying principle of explaining all electrical phenomena. The most basic quantity in an electric circuit is the electric charge. Here we will review some important characteristic of electric charge. Then we will come to the current actually current is the rate of change of your what you call the charge flow. So, we will come to that. The first one is the charge is bipolar meaning that electrical effects are absorbed in uh, your are, are, are described in terms of positive and negative charges right. So, charge is bipolar. So, it means electrical effects are described in terms of positive and your negative charges the so, first first thing. Second thing is according to experimental observations the only charges that occur in nature are integral multipliers of the electronic charge that is E is equal to this you know from your class 12 physics also E is equal to minus 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb right. So, this is your the only charges that occur in nature are integral multipliers of the electronic charge that is this value. And third point is the electrical effects are attributed to both the separation of charge and your charges in motion. And the fourth point is 
the law of conservation of charge state that charge can neither be created nor destroyed only transferred right. So, it neither you can create nor you can destroy only it can be transferred right. Thus, the algebraic sum of the electric charges in a system does not change. So, the fourth one is very important right. Uh, so, this should be in your mind. So, effects of electric charge can be experienced when we try to remove our woolen I mean you might have seen also remove our woolen sweater and have it stick to our body or walk across a carpet and receive a shock. Other, other electrical charges I mean if you I mean when we remove our your woolen sweater in winter you can see that it is your sticking on our body this is due to the electric charge or sometimes we get some some kind of shock when you are walking you know you receive a shock when you are walking on a carpet. Other thing is that uh, you, you take a very small pieces of paper and keep it and if you rub it take a plastic and rub it on your head and just after that you uh, hold it on this piece of paper you will find that all piece of papers are attracted towards your what you call towards that your that plastic right you can experience of your own. So, anyway so therefore, charge is an electrical property of the atomic particles of which matter consists measured in coulomb. So, charge unit of charge is a coulomb and it is an electrical property of the atomic particles of which matter actually consists. So, measure in coulomb. Now, consider the flow of electric charges. Uh, so, actually this is actually do not look at this as a page number right. So, now consider the flow of electric a unique feature of electric charge is that it can be transferred from one place to another place. That means, it is mobile that means, charge can be transferred from one place to another. So, hence it is mobile when it can be converted to another form of energy right and the motion of charge creates an electric your fluid we call it is current. So, now little bit we have to see that when we have we know that a conducting wire consists of several atoms right and the battery is a source of electromagnetic force. So, conductor conducting wire consists of several atoms and a battery is a source of electromotive force. When a conducting wire is connected to a battery the very first example what we saw that a voltage source a switch a conducting wires and a tungsten lamp right. The charges are compelled to move. So, as soon as a, you know a battery is there a conducting wire is there. So, as soon as you connect the wire across the battery. So, what will happen charges are compelled to move positive charges move in one direction and the negative charges move in the opposite direction a very simple logic. This motion of charges create electric current. Now, who, now which direction of the charge will consider the direction of the current convention is to take the current flow as the movement of the positive charges that is opposite to the flow of negative charges as shown in next figure figure 1.2. So, if you if you look at this suppose this is battery. Uh, this is so little bit you know bigger way to show that your charge flowing. <coughs> so, this is actually negative charge flowing this is the, this is the negative terminal this is the positive terminal. So, the charge will flow in the direction of the your what you call positive flow of charge. So, this way so that is the from plus. So, this is this is a convention so this is the direction of the current or in other way it is opposite to the flow of the negative charge this is the flow of negative charge it is move this is minus. So, it is moving in other way. So, this is actually convention therefore, if you look into that the so if you look into that the convention is this is a convention is take the current flow or the movement of positive charges that is opposite to the flow of the negative charges as shown in figure oh, this is figure 1.2. So, the way the direction of the positive flow charge is the, uh, sorry, is the direction of the current or the opposite to the negative flow of the charge. So, so, the electrical effects caused by charges in motion depend on the rate of charge flow. The rate of charge flow is known as the electric current. Suppose, if Q is the charge, T is the time and I is the current. So, I actually is equal to dQ by dt. So, mathematically the relationship between current and charge and time is dependent that I is equal to dQ by dt. This is the equation 1.1 that I is the current in ampere, Q is the charge in coulombs and T the time in second. So, basically current is your current is the your what you call by is equal to dQ by dt. So, 
you, you, you note that 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb per second. That means, if this side is 1 ampere, this side it has to be 1. So, this is coulomb, this is second. So, it will be 1 coulomb per second, right. Suppose, suppose if Q for example, is suppose uh, you take that data in such a fashion such that uh, the d q is 5, d t is also 5. So, that way. So, it will be your what you call uh, that uh, 1 coulomb per second, right. So, the charge transfer between the time t 0 and t is obtained by integrating both sides of equation 1 we get. That means, suppose suppose at initial time t is equal to t 0 and your final time is t, then if you integrate this equation, if you make this equation, therefore, that q can be made that is equal to t 0 to t i d t. That means, this one if you come that your d q is equal to i into d t. Therefore, q is equal to integral of t 0 to t then i d t. So, that is equation we are writing q is equal to t 0 to t i d t that means, charge transfer right between time t 0 and t. So, this is the equation q is equal to t 0 to t i d t this is equation 1.2 right. So, that means, equation 1 suggests that current need to be a constant valued function that means, here from this equation 1 it suggests that currents actually need to be a constant valued function, right. So, constant valued function as we will see later, there can be several types of current that is your uh, your charge can vary with time in several ways. Uh, we will see both DC and AC, AC at the time we will see current is time varying, right and for DC actually current is constant. So, it is uh, not time varying, right. So, when a current is constant with time, right we say that we have direct current that is DC current. I will show you the diagram. Thus, a direct current is a current that remain constant with time. So, I mean it is your what you call it is it is your whatever may be the time the current is constant. On the other hand, a current that varies with time and reversing direction periodically that is plus minus plus minus say right is called the alternating current. This alternating current we will see for AC circuit not now, but little bit of diagram and other things I will show you for the sake of your what you call understanding. So, thus an alternating current is a current that varies with time periodically right. So, that means it will be plus minus plus minus. So, alternating current is used in our household the because because all our household everything is a AC source AC power right. So, AC circuit we will see later first DC then AC to run the refrigerator, toaster, air conditioner and other electrical appliances whatever residence we get these are all a, your AC power, AC voltage, AC current right. So, but DC that current is constant. So, figure 1.3 actually shows the values of a DC current and the sinusoidal AC current. So, in this case your this is understandable this is sinusoidal a little bit her portion has cut her, but this is sinusoidal and this is figure 1.3. So, this is a DC current this is current this is time second it is a constant suppose current DC current is the 3 ampere it is constant right. Whereas, this is actually a periodic this, this is periodically changing from plus to minus. So, this is AC current this is a cosine function and this is your AC current it is given I is equal to say cosine 2 pi uh, your 2 pi uh, t just hold on that this is the function i is equal to cos 2 pi t right. So, this is AC current AC current we will see later. So, and this is example of DC current. Now, figure 1.4 that means, this one shows the other types of time varying current such as the triangular and square wave. This is also time varying current this is a triangular function this is current and this is also it is a rectangular one this is also pre changing periodically. So, plus minus this is also this is triangular wave form this is square wave form this is also alternating alternating current right. So, now as we have seen earlier the direction of current flow is conventionally taken as the direction of positive charge movement I told you that current when you take the battery symbol plus minus from the plus the positive charge is flowing. So, that is why it is taken as the direction of the positive charge movement. So, based on this convention a current of 4 ampere say may be represented your positively or negatively. This is shown in figure 5 where a lamp is connected in series with a battery look how it is. Uh, 
starting from this, uh, let us we will try to understand the, we will try to understand everything, then later stage we will find things are, things have become very simple to us. So, what we will do, the, just try to understand the basic flow, basic understanding. If this is clear, then you will find circuit theory, this uh, your what you call the circuit part and other things are very simple. For example, this is a battery, but battery sim symbol and other things will come later, this is a battery. This is plus symbol, minus symbol and this is your uh, two terminals are marked 1 and 2 right and this is your say tungsten lamp, this is a lamp and when you take the 4 ampere current say is flowing, say 4 ampere current is flowing. So, it is 1 to 2, it is given 1 to 2 4 ampere, then what will be I 2 to 1, it will be just opposite no, it will be minus 4 because this current actually moving like this. I, I, when you take this current is coming like this I 1 2 and but when you take reverse direction that I 2 1 it will be minus 4 ampere. So, in this I, in this figure I 1 2 is 4 ampere this means the current through the lamp uh, with it reference direction pointing from 1 to 2. So, this is the reference direction 1 to 2 that means if you take 1 to 2 4 that means current is flowing 4 ampere 1 to 2 positive right. But if you take other way I was suppose if you take 2 to 1 that it will just negative sign it will be minus 4 ampere if you take 2 to 1 just uh, just reversal of the your what you call the direction because here we have taken I 1 to here we have taken I to 1. Therefore, therefore your uh, I to 1 is the current with, the ref with its reference directed from 2 to 1 of course, I 1 to and I to 1 are the same in magnitude and opposite in sign. So, because they denote the same current, but with opposite direction. Thus, we have I 1 2 is equal to minus I 2 1 is equal to 4 ampere, the magnitude is same, but I 1 2 is 4 ampere, therefore, I 2 1 is equal to minus 4 ampere. So, this is equation 1.3. So, this part is very simple, but understandable if you reverse that means, direct reference direction 1 to 2 means from 1 to 2 4 ampere. If you take this is reference direction 2 to 1, the sign will change then I 2 1 should be minus 4 ampere. Therefore, I 1 2 is equal to minus I 2 1 is equal to 4 ampere current magnitude will remain same only the sign part right other way. So, this is actually little bit understanding of the current. Next is the voltage. So, now current part is gone now voltage as explained in the previous section just now to move the electron in a conductor in a particular direction it requires some work or energy transfer right. So, this work actually is done by external electric electromotive uh, force EMF typically represented by the battery as shown in figure 1.2 right. So, this is your figure 1.2. So, this is actually external electromotive force EMF typically represent by the battery figure 1.2 will come. This EMF now this figure 1.2 we have seen that your one, one uh, voltage source then your uh, what you call uh, tungsten filament lamp right. This EMF is also known as potential difference or we call sometimes voltage right. Actually, actually uh, whenever positive and negative charges are separated energy is expanded. So, this EMF is also known as the potential difference and voltage. So, actually whenever positive and negative charges are separated energy actually is expanded. So, uh, voltage is the energy per unit charge created by the separation. Thus, the voltage say V 1 2 between two points 1 and 2 in an electric circuit is something like this. Suppose, uh, uh, electric uh, this is your actually two points say we will come to that other thing. This is the two point this is 1 and 2 and this is the voltage say V 1 2 and this is the lamp right. Therefore, when you when you come here thus the voltage V 1 2 between two points say 1 and 2 in an electric electric circuit is that energy or work needed to move a unit charge from 1 to 2. We express this ratio in differential form that is V is equal to small v is equal to capital V 1 to suffix is equal to d w upon d q, where w is the energy in joules, q is the charge in coulombs and V 1 to the voltage in volts. So, voltage actually that is your V 1 to actually d w of d w by d q, the w is the energy uh, energy in joules and q the charge in coulomb. 
So, in equation, so this is actually your equation 1.4. Therefore, equation 1.4 it is evident that 1 volt is equal to if it is this side is 1 volt it will be 1 joule per coulomb. So, that is why it is 1 joule per coulomb or 1 joule is equal to your 1 newton meter. So, 1 newton meter per coulomb, but 1 joule per coulomb generally we use. So, thus voltage or potential difference is the energy required to move a unit charge through an element right. Just I just I say that is why I underline the voltage or potential difference is the energy required to move a unit charge through an element like figure look at the figure. Figure 1.6 shows the voltage across a lamp connected between points 1 and 2. The plus and minus symbol signs are also given. So, so this is the polarity this is the 1 and this is 2, 2 1 is positive 2 is negative. So, signs are used to represent reference direction of voltage polarity. So, the voltage V 1 2 can be interpreted as your in two ways first thing is this point you try to understand first one is the point 1 is at a potential of V 1 2 volts higher than point 2 look at this look at this diagram right. It this this point is your at a potential of V 1 2 higher than this your uh, your what you call that uh, other other point 2. So, that means point 1 is at a potential of V 1 2 volts higher than point 2 or the potential at point 1 with respect to point 2 is V 1 2 or the potential at point 1 with respect to point 2 is V 1 2 second one is easier to remember right. So, this is the concept the plus minus right. So, in this case either point 1 is at a potential of V 1 2 volts higher than point 2 or the potential at point 1 with respect to point 2 is V 1 2 right. So, therefore, the logically it follows that V 1 2 is equal to minus V 2 1 that means, if you take if you take say V so for example, say just for example, say V 1 2 is equal to uh, just uh, just one minute uh, say uh, uh, why is white white board Okay, okay. Thank you. We'll be we'll be back again. We'll be back again. Thank you. Yeah. Uh.